Hi, you guys. I'm here today to talk about Faux Fur Vest. Um, so Together is a little challenge that I run over on my Patreon where um, all the hemp ciders, that's their nickname, the patrons, um, and I make the same pattern uh, every single month and we kind of just chat about it over there and people get help and stuff. So for this whole year, I've decided to do free sewing patterns and this month's pattern is the Mood Faux Fur Vest and when I say that, that's a very loose, using the term pattern is very loose because it's more of like a tutorial and then it's also like a very skimpy tutorial. There's not a lot of information there. So I thought I would expound upon that here and help everybody that wants to make that pattern but is left with more questions and answers after reading the tutorial. Like I totally get that. Um, the concept that the writer of the tutorial has is pretty good. Um, it is very simple to draft your own vest pattern. We really shouldn't be overthinking it too, too much. Um, but the way she has you do it is a little bit confusing and also could cause there to be issues that you wouldn't know because she didn't elaborate enough. Um, so the first kind of problem that I see with the tutorial is that she cut out her pattern cut out her fabric where it there's no shoulder seam so it just imagine putting it up over your head and so it's one whole piece so that's great um for the front you, you gotta you gotta remember we're working with fur here and fur has a nap some furs do um where if you rub it one way it feels good if you rub it the other way it feels bad or if you have like dangly parts like your fur hangs down if you cut it all one piece and then put it on over your head, the parts in the back will be opposite of what's in the front. So if you have danglies in the front, it'll be up in the back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So whereas that worked out for her fur, because she even says in her tutorial that her fur had no nap. Um, that's great. But for universally speaking, most furs have a nap. So we need to add shoulder seams to the um, pattern that she drew out. You have two paths here once you get to this point. You can either take like an oversized jacket pattern or an oversized t-shirt or something that fits like pretty long in the shoulders and, and pretty boxy and not really fitted. And you can just use that pattern as your vest pattern. Just pull that out, cut out the pattern pieces as you normally would. I was trying to like lean in to what she was trying to do like hey, you just draw it out and it's no big deal. So I took some videos of me um, cutting out my fur and how I got kind of the shapes that I was going for. I used a lot of body measurements. You can see she has on, on hers underarm measurement. And then I think what's supposed to be like a waist measurement, maybe a bust measurement, it, it was really confusing. Um, and then that's it. Those are all the measurements she took, I think. So I added to that my shoulder um, length. So if you put on a necklace or even like this shirt here, you can see how it's kind of like riding up right about here. That's where I'm measuring and I'm measuring out to where I want it to go, which is a little bit over my shoulder. So I took that measurement. I took my bust apex. I took my hip. Um, oh, and the arm size. So however long I wanted this drop to be, you know, um, which is going to be a little bit bigger than like your regular sweater. So I wanted it to come down right about here. So I measured from here to here on my body as well. And then I cut that out. So here's what that looks like. Okay, so here's what I'm going to go with. Um, these are all based on rough measurements that I took on my own body. Started with my shoulder length. I went from like my neck area, my neckline, kind of like where a necklace falls on top of your shoulder and went out kind of falling a little bit on the outside of my shoulder. That ended up being six inches. And then I measured down from that point on my shoulder to kind of like under my armpit where I wanted it to end. I needed to know how long this needed to be. And that came to six, seven inches as well. And then I just took my ruler and drew a line kind of following a curve along those two things and then same thing for the back neckline 
So all of it's kind of roughly based on the length of my shoulder. I want that to be accurate. And then what happens everywhere else is a little bit like it's going to be fine. And then from here, we're going to go straight down. Um, and the width that I folded this over is the width of my hip plus two, three, four inches maybe. Um, so that's how I got to this width and how I know that that's what I'm going to do. So, okay. I got the back cut out here and then I saved the scrap from like the neckline. So this is the shoulder and this is the armhole. So I've got all of this to be the exact same as the back. And then once I get here, I'm going to make some kind of v-neck situation i'm not entirely sure what yet but i'm going to use this to mimic the arm side and get the shoulder going and then decide what to do about the the neckline yeah it's not as big as it seems so something like that maybe right that'll be pretty and then cut along the middle here and then that'll give you your left and right side of your front. Okay, and once you've got one uh, one side of your front cut out, lay it out, wrong sides together, on top of the rest of your fabric, and then trace out the rest of your front. That way you'll have an exact matching fronts. All right, and then if you're wondering how I'm cutting mine, I am using scissors because I have an X-Acto knife. I don't even know where it is, but the blade was so bad on it, it wasn't working. So all I'm doing is taking these serrated scissors from Kai. They have like, I talk about these all the time. I really do grab them more than I would realize. There you go. Can you see the serrated? So I'm just opening them up like this and then doing this dragging number. And then I have to cut a little bit or even use a seam ripper to just get in there and get the little bits that are holding on tightly. But this is actually working really, really well. Very, very similar to an X-Acto knife or a blade situation. So. Okay, so just to reiterate, the back is cut on the fold and you have shoulder seams. You have like a little scoopy part for your neck. Um, and then you have scoopy parts, semicircles for your arm size, and it goes straight down from there. Okay. And then for the front, you have the same thing for your shoulders, same thing for your arm size, same thing for your side seams, except you're cutting up the middle. So not cut on the fold. And I created like a little V um, to go out to my shoulder seam here. And then as with any fur tutorial, they talk to you about um, not just cutting through it like they do at the fabric store, but to take a razor blade to the back like netting part and literally cutting that but not cutting the fur. So I was able to accomplish that by using my Kai serrated scissors, um, which you saw in the video. And then once you got all your pieces cut, you can kind of pick back up with the tutorial again. Her instructions for making sure all the fur is going to the inside of the seam allowance um, and sewing along there was all really helpful, but on mine, you're going to sew it the same way. You just add the shoulder seams. So, sew the shoulder seams, sew the side seams, sew the same thing on your lining, sew those right sides together, turn it all out. Hopefully this all helps kind of clarify the free tutorial, the free faux fur best tutorial that Mood has. So hopefully, yeah, you guys will join us. My Patreon is linked in the description box below. Um, and yeah, you can hang out with us and make not only this pattern, but all sorts of patterns. So I hope you'll join us there. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for me today. Happy vest making. Bye.